When you're so damn close, you can taste it. Years ago on the Board at Work podcast, I can't even remember which episode it was, it's been so long, we got into an extended debate on what to do about selfie cameras and bezels. Now, I still think notches are hideous, hole punches really aren't much better, and why? Why are we cutting into the screen of a device for the mediocre web camera on your phone? So we debated what else we could do, and this was a little while before the OnePlus 7 Pro, and the idea of pop-up cameras was really in the market. But my solution? My solution was going dual screen. If the rear of my phone is going to be glass anyway, why not embed a smaller screen there? It's a trick we've seen on standalone cameras. You only need to have one camera and the rear camera is always the better camera. It's always better than your selfie camera. I was of course mocked ruthlessly. And since then, anytime I've brought it up, gadget enthusiasts trip over themselves to point out how it wouldn't work or it would be too complicated. Consumers wouldn't be able to figure it out or some other such nonsense. Well, the idea is here now, and I'm happy to say that my solution is awesome. It works way better than I thought it would, and if we could sort out a few teething pains, this could be one of the best all-rounder solutions for simplifying some of the tech clutter on our phones. So we're taking the ZTE Nubia Z20 for a spin. This phone gets so much right. I'm just borrowing this for a bit. You know, it's a big shout out to Ricky, the YouTube tech guy, for hooking this up so I could borrow it, but this is not going to be one of my deeper dive reviews. More, I just wanna chat the evolution of this concept and how this is one potential path for a fresh take on a standard phone. Lay in a little groundwork, the Z20 is a solid Android competitor. Some of the top specs of 2019, we've got a triple camera rear shooters, but the front face is all display. And this delivers a delightful separation of services. One full screen for multimedia use, your normal phone experience, and then another smaller screen for selfies and video calls, but with full access to the entire phone and all of your apps. Of course, the first thing you're probably gonna do is snap a selfie, and now you can compose your selfie using a little screen, and you can see a big camera lens to look at. It's kind of hilarious, but this also solves the issue of people not knowing where to look on your phone when you're taking a selfie. It's right there. It's pretty obvious. I almost want to just end the video here and say, mission accomplished, smash that bell icon. Ditto video. If you just want to shoot a walk and talk vlog, best camera on the phone, little composition window, and you can go to town. I already do this with regular phones, only I shoot blind, and it's taken a lot of practice to line up the rear of the phone so that I know I'm generally in the ballpark of what I want to shoot. The obvious minor compromise is a smaller screen for when you take those video calls. And that is a bit of a bummer considering how large our main phone screens have gotten. Covering some of the ergonomics, the Nubia does a reasonably good job of auto-detecting how you're holding the phone. There are fingerprint sensors on both sides. So if you scan your thumb with one screen up, that's the screen that will unlock. When navigating the different features and different displays, there's a notification tray icon and a little floating bubble so that you can easily swap between the two screens. Now, switching to selfie mode in the camera app will also flip screens for you. And Nubia does something really smart here. You have the option to mirror both displays or the phone will remember each screen separately. You know, Say you're doing something in Twitter on one screen and then you go to take a picture on the other screen, the phone will remember what you were doing when you flip back. This is really fun territory considering the current trends. Dual screen devices, folding devices, waterfall or wraparound displays. Funnily, for including two separate displays, this might be one of the more cost-effective ways to push smartphone design. There aren't any moving parts for a periscope or a flip-up shooter. One of the screens is smaller and there's no engineering for a hinge. There's no futuristic design hiding a camera under the display, complicating the screen. Not even a fingerprint sensor, those are on the sides. It really is the most normal phone way to have an all screen front face with a minimum of bezel. Plus you get to save a couple pennies by giving up an extra camera, which was usually an extra lame camera right at the top of the phone. It's not there. If I'm being honest and we were iterating on this design, while it's a cute trick having dual fingerprint sensors, I think the Nubia would have been fine with one fingerprint power button. I mean, just walking the user through scanning both thumbs for ambidextrous unlocking would be about all you'd need to do to remove one extra piece of hardware. There are a few obvious concerns. We've got two displays, so any drop which cracks some glass will probably damage one of those displays, though in a way you also get a safety where if you absolutely destroy one screen, the other 
might still survive and be usable. And the case situation isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Ricky opted for this full screen magnetic enclosure. So we've got dual panels that snap together with magnets. And then this adds a little bit of extra side bulk. You know, the bezels, which I think are necessary for holding onto any phone, let alone a dual screen phone. But because this isn't an adhesive screen guard, it is easy to get a little bit of dust or grit in between the panel and the screen. And sometimes that can affect how you swipe your notification shade. There are a few usability gripes on this outing. First, the haptic motor is fuzzy, like the floppy feel we used to have on phones from 2018. And it would be nice if there were just a slightly tighter pulse when you were typing through the keyboard. But the big sin, the main transgression, the Nubia limits your camera options in selfie mode, and I can't for the life of me figure out why. Why? Why do this? Now, thankfully, you still have full manual controls for stills. That would have made this experiment a deal breaker if they gimped the camera that bad. But why are we limiting to 1080p video in selfie mode? The Nubia shoots pretty solid 4K60 video. Unless you want to shoot video of yourself, it's the same sensor. Why would you do that? I'll never understand why Android manufacturers seem hell-bent on drastically reducing our options and controls on selfies. But it's even worse when it's the same sensor. Lastly, one obnoxious no-no, the Nubia's photo app won't let you look at your photos unless you enable location sharing. I don't tag my content with location. I'm not going to give a manufacturer gallery app location access. That's just bad form. But those gripes aside, it's really a shame other manufacturers didn't try this sooner. We're now getting into dual screen and folding phone design. So this, this is gonna feel less futuristic. The handful of reviewers who've shrugged this idea off as not being cool enough, when in reality, it's significantly more practical. It solves the issue some folks have with having notches or hole punches and ultimately arrives at a more lifestyle, durable product than periscopes or folding phones. I mean, if you're out there on YouTube complaining about notches, but you aren't willing to consider a solution like this, then notches probably don't bother you as much as you're claiming they do. Actually using a dual screen like this, minus the gimped video recording, it's exactly the kind of experience I was hoping for when I pitched the idea of it years ago. I'm just disappointed that it's probably gonna get lost in the shuffle. So where are we at with this stuff? Are you excited for new form factors? Do you wanna settle down on a more traditional phone design. Is this stuff getting exhausting or is it exciting? Let's have a chat in the comments down below. And once again, huge shout out to Ricky, the YouTube tech guy. I'm gonna drop his channel down there too. You should give him a follow. He's real good people. I, I definitely appreciate the hookup because I've been dying to play with one of these for so long. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to this channel. More than just nerding out on the most SEO popular options, we wanna make sure we're checking out all of our options. If you would like to help support the production of some of those broader tech conversations, there are some links below, or you might consider joining the list of names currently scrolling by on your screen. It's a growing community of fun, like-minded tech pals, a huge resource for me as I'm planning future content, future reviews, and working out of my new gadget lab. They're really good people. I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.